Hey guys, Jay Shakur here. I just wrapped up this season 2022 on the Bassmaster Elite Series. It was my rookie year. And uh, you know, I kind of want to run down maybe four or five things that I took away from this year or learned. And then, you know, some things that I can give to other people that are potentially, you know, trying to qualify for the Elite Series and maybe what they can expect um, when they fish their first year. Um, number one that hits me right off the bat is just how tough it is to compete against these guys. I mean, I thought it was tough at first, but until I started competing in a few tournaments, I mean, these guys catch them every single time. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, what the conditions are, um, what stage the fish are in, you know, if they're biting or not. I mean, these guys are gonna catch them. Just to cash a check, you gotta be in that top 47. It might not sound that bad, but in reality, I mean, it's tough. It's truly a mental battle, and uh, that's probably my number one thing that I learned so far fishing the Elite Series on my rookie season. You know, it was probably like my third tournament in. I mean, I was kind of more going conservative and just trying to catch a, a good limit. I mean, not a giant limit, but to cash a check. When I soon realized, when I caught 15 pounds on Santee Cooper, and you know, like I was barely even making the cut. So at the time, and I knew the fishing was only gonna get better because the weather was gonna get better. So that's when I quickly realized, I mean, you really gotta, you know, step up your game and shoot for a big bag rather than just try for par and cash a check in these tournaments. What does it take to find the bigger fish rather than, you know, you're sitting on a spot, per se, you're sitting on the St. Lawrence River, for example. You're like waylaying the two pounders, two pounders, two pounders, and then a couple of threes mixed in, or maybe a couple, you know, mid threes mixed in, and you're only at, you know, 15 to 18 pounds. That I mean, most people know that's just not gonna cut it on the St. Lawrence. When to know to move is the number one thing. I mean, when you're catching that caliber of fish, you know, it's time to move. It's that kind of body of water where you have to be on four to five pound fish, five plus pound fish, you know, to contend even for a top 10 out there. So, uh, you know, that's when I go to my map, go to places that I wouldn't normally go. Even if I was catching three pounders somewhere, like per se on a nice looking point like this, you know, if I'm whaling three pounders up shallow, maybe I'll just slide out a little bit deeper, you know, maybe go five, 10 feet deeper, look around a little bit, you know, side scan a little bit, see what's going on. Um, it's just small things like that where when you pick up on it during the day, you can kind of figure out where the bigger fish have moved to. And, uh, you know, usually when you find the bigger fish, usually they're grouped up, especially on bodies of water like that. When I talk about catching, you know, these bigger fish and having these bigger bags, um, staying confident is the number one key. And throughout this entire year, you know, another thing I learned was keeping faith in what you know. What you know generally when you go to a new body of water is the first thing you want to do. Um, and this year, for example, what I knew worked. And, you know, there were a couple of times where I got away from what I knew. And, you know, it kind of threw me for, for a little bit of a curveball in a couple of tournaments, you know, kind of was down the first day, had a comeback day. And that's when I went back to things that I was confident in, you know. I have, you know, all around like three techniques that I love doing, you know, fishing for smallmouths with a drop shot would be one. Flipping a jig is another. I do that at home all the time. And then, you know, maybe a fourth one would be throwing a chatterbait or a swim jig, you know, just power fishing in general and just covering a lot of water. Um, you know, three things that I have a lot of confidence in and I can go to places that I've never been to, put my head down and, uh, you know, potentially catch a bigger bag than what I think I can catch, you know, maybe just trying to go catch a limit somewhere. So staying confident was another thing that, you know, I kind of took and learned this year. I, I had that before I fished on the Elite Series. I had some confidence, but to have that like next level of confidence when you're fishing in the Elite Series is a little bit different because these guys, you know, they're intimidating. I mean, to look up to them for so long, like people like Brandon Polinick and all these guys, um, you know, it's pretty crazy when you finally get out there, but you still have to hone in that confidence when you're out there. And, uh, you know, that's when those techniques came back to me. And when I was, when I was doing what I like to do, you know, that's when I was catching the bigger fish. You know, being from Wisconsin and having to travel to all these tournaments down south, it's, it really takes a toll, a toll on a guy. I mean, I'm not saying that it's the worst thing in the world or you should never do it, but, uh, you know, the behind the scenes of it is, I mean, I'm in the truck, you know, putting 40, 50,000 miles on my truck every year. And, uh, you know, the hotels and the lodging is 
is good and all. You know, I have a travel partner that I travel with, um, Alex Redwine on the Elite Series as well. So that helped out, you know, a ton this year. And, uh, you know, just small things like that go a long ways, you know, cutting costs for hotels, food, you know, that really helps out in the long run, and especially when you have someone to travel with on the Elite Series. It just really helps your mental side, you know, somebody that you can trust, you know, go in at the end of the day, talk to them about the day you had. That really helps out when you're fishing higher level tournaments like the Elite Series. I personally take it upon myself to maintenance my boat. Um, so I do all my boat work, you know, all the oil changes, everything like that. And then as far as that, you know, I also do all the rigging on my boat. So I know where everything is. Um, when, it, when anything starts to get out of line, I know what's going on, especially when I'm on the water. That's the number one thing that I kind of take pride in. I like to know how my boat is set up so I can fix it on the water without having to go somewhere or do something, you know, in a pinch. And then, you know, on top of that, I also still do partially, but I used to work at an auto mechanic shop and I work on cars. So on top of that, you know, I like to know what's going on with my truck. I mean, I try and keep up with my truck, you know, on the road, you know, you're putting thousands and thousands of miles on that thing. So, you know, I do my own tires, brakes, all that stuff. And uh, when you're going through Nashville at midnight and you're trying to get home, you know that that stuff, you know, is done right and you know how, how to do it in case something were to happen. The main thing that I take out of it is, and you know, that I want you guys to take out of this, is that, you know, sponsors, without them, I mean, you really cannot fish the Elite Series or you can't fish other circuits. I mean, it would have to be all self-funded, which is almost impossible, you know. What they give you, you have to give back. I mean, help them out as much as possible, whether it's, you know, social media or all the platforms we have nowadays. You know, the more help you can give them, uh, the better off they're gonna be towards you and uh, you know, it'll just be a great relationship in the long run.